see what type of drawings we are receiving on a site. Okay. There are at least 15 to 20 number of drawings, different drawings of different category that we receive on any site. Uh, so here, if you see very first drawing uh, that receive, we receive is a site layout plan. We shall obviously, uh, we are going to deal with the RCC drawings in detail, but we shall just get an overview of what different type of drawings we receive on a construction site. So first of all is the site layout plan. So what is this site layout plan? If you can see here in this drawing, there are multiple buildings, either they are row houses or flat buildings, okay, flats. And whatever the area of the site is there, along with the site, there are internal roads that we can see. And there are main roads outside, approach roads are there. And there is some, uh, what we can say, gardens are also there inside it. So it is a site layout plan. It is nothing but a scaled drawing, larger scaled drawing, correct? Or a plan of the proposed building construction site, isn't it? Uh, it includes different roads attached to the building. Then it indicates or represents different sizes and structures of the existing building. Uh, even if we know, some of us know uh, everything about this, but still uh, from student point of view, I am expressing these things as a fresh possible. Okay. Then floor plan. In second year level, we have learned how to draw these floor plans, elevations, sections and so on and these floor plans indicate what uh, the positions of different rooms in the building or in a flat isn't it so most of the things are something like this <clears throat> now uh, if you see many a times we don't know how to read or how to interpret these dimensions. I don't know if you are able to see the drawings or, and dimensions. If you see here is the bedroom, okay. Below this bedroom, we can see 3.15 by 2.7, okay. So these dimensions are in meters. However, here we can see the dimensions are in millimeters. So whenever the drawings are in different unit, it needs to be mentioned. Because when a drawing is received, it is there is a common note everywhere in most of the drawings. All dimensions are in millimeters, as we saw in the initial slide. But here, we can see 3.15 by 2.7. So looking at the drawing, which dimension is horizontal and which dimension is vertical, it is always a question, isn't it? So most of the times what happens is usually first dimension mentioned is a horizontal dimension and second dimension mentioned is vertical dimension. It is, I'm talking about plan dimension. If you see here, water closet, its size is 1.2 by 0 0.93. So 1.2 is from this end to this end and 0 0.93 is from top end to bottom end for this particular part. So usually first dimension represents horizontal size of the room. Second dimension, it represents vertical size of the room. Okay, vertical dimension. <clears throat> so here, this is how we are supposed to interpret the dimensions also. If they are not mentioned in uh, millimeters or if the unit is not mentioned, whatever is uh, their unit, appropriate unit, you should be able to interpret it. If not mentioned, it may be in feet and inches also, but it does not happen. Whenever there is different uh, unit dimensions, it should be mentioned clearly. Okay. Uh, then, 
sectional drawings. Now, what are these section drawings? Section drawings are usually uh, the same uh, elevation drawing. Okay, it is the same elevation drawing, but it has uh, or it represents what is the inside part of the building. If you can see here, ground level is there. So below the ground level, here is the plinth height and there are different layers of materials. Let us say here is a 300 mm thickness rubble soling at the bottom most layer. Then above this, there is a 100 mm thick PCC layer, plain cement concrete. And above that is the 50 mm thick flooring tiles. So when you pass a section line through these plants, you will see different layers of materials, details of staircase, details of doors and windows, their sizes, sill level, and so on. Okay, even the overhead water tank we can see here, the headroom also we can see here. So these drawings, these uh, details of the drawings we see in the sectional elevation, mostly plan, elevation, section, as well as the site layout plan, uh, they are mostly uh, mentioned uh, in the same drawing, same drawing sheet, isn't it? Then the structural drawings come because uh, if you see these are working drawings, floor plan is as good as a working drawing and with the help of working drawing, we prepare structural drawings, correct? So structural drawings, we know it represents the details of, reinforcement details of different structural elements and those structural elements are mostly slabs, beams, columns, footings, staircase, shear wall, isn't it? So mostly these are the common uh, structural elements. A normal brick wall, it is not a structural element, okay? It is not a structural element. Then working drawings are there. These drawings are required to execute the work on any construction site. And these working drawings, uh, they serve the purpose of uh, acting as main guideline to the engineers so as to construct the building as per the design. <coughs> Then foundation plan. So when we are working at uh, for the actual execution of the structure, we are supposed to receive the foundation plan first. Okay, site plan, site layout plan. They are uh, used for cleaning uh, of the site and so on. Uh, make the site uh, ready to uh, undertake the construction. Foundation plan, here you should be able to see different foundation sizes uh, along with the columns. And here uh, you will see different sizes, shapes of the foundation as per the columns. Then the center to center distance between the two footings will be there. There will be center line of the buildings passing through different footings. And you will also see some details of PCC and excavation work. This is what is the role of a foundation plan. Uh, then there is column layout plan. Most of the times column layout plan comes with the, comes or the, their orientation, their sizes, they are already shown in the architectural plan or working drawing. And here, if you can see, some of the columns have orientation along horizontal direction, and some of the columns have orientation along vertical direction. And in almost all cases, if you can see width of the column matches with the width of the beam or wall, isn't it? So you have to take care that there are no offsets coming inside the 
building uh, sorry inside the rooms there are no offsets but uh, it is not possible to achieve this thing for all the cases okay and column layout plan it comes with sizes of the column corresponding footing sizes and nomenclatures given to columns usually the columns are clubbed together which have same size uh, of the cross section same size of the footing and same reinforcement if all the parameters are same then columns will be grouped together uh, then we have these plinth beam layout drawings so here the plinth beam layout drawings they will reveal the sizes of the beams beam positions from which end to which end these beams will be laid then there will be reinforcement details obviously and uh, such a layout will be important for preparing the layout of homework for the plinth beams so most of the time a uh, time uh, beam layout drawings are useful for form work laying the form work uh, then there are certain other drawings uh, like flooring detailed drawings doors and windows frame details plan then sill and lintel level drawings plumbing layout drawings electrical layout drawings finishing drawings these are some miscellaneous drawings so i have not gone into much details of such drawings okay